and how it's affecting your health, what you can do about it, and and some of the little things that are going on. I, I am not a specialist in all of the things I talk about. I just got really sick, and most of the things I talk about, I was suffering from and got better when doctors were not able to help me. So I've learned a lot over the few years that I've learned about insulin resistance and how it's impacting my health. And now I'm trying to share that with other people, along with the protocol that I use to overcome my own diabetes and high blood pressure and all of that so that I didn't have to be on medications and could do it more naturally. So yes, I'll be talking about a protocol. But yesterday when we were talking fiber, protein, and fats, and I'll recap that a little bit this morning, we started talking about fats and people wanted to know more about this whole big fat debate right? Like what's what's healthy for you, what's not healthy for you and why. So we're going to go over some of that really quickly today. Now, look, I'm not, I am not the scientist. I'm not the doctor. I'm not the nutritionist. I lean on the people who have those degrees, who are specialists in their fields and um, who actually have the knowledge. I listen to them. I look at the papers that they, they pull up because I don't, I'm not a scientist. I don't go find all that stuff, but I do find it from the people who know. So now look, it's interesting in doing the research I was doing for this fats talk this morning. There are some people who were talking about, (laughs) I feel like he's part of my family, but Dr. Ben Bickman, who wrote this book, let's talk about Ben Bickman because a lot of the information I'm going to bring to you today comes from him. And I want you to understand why it's valuable and and why you should or or should not be listening to or be careful of what other people are saying. First of all, Dr. Ben Bickman is a metabolic scientist. He only studies metabolism and all things insulin resistance, what's causing it, what's affecting it, how we can get better from it. He actually had a hand in in uh, the science behind the products that I'm going to talk about, the protocol that I talk about. And so let's understand that. And he leans heavily on um, papers that are, or studies that are actually worthwhile. What what I heard this big debate was, oh, Dr. Bickman says this, and, and there are studies that say that. What we need to understand are there are different types of studies. And what's happening is we have people who have agendas who are putting out these papers that are observational and they don't have a lot of controls. And so they just tweak it to get the results they want so that they can come and tell you that their seed oil or their whatever sugar is actually good for you and it's not bad for you. But if you go in and look at those studies, there's not a a lot of length to those studies. There's not a lot of consistency to those studies. Most of those studies were papers that people filled out and turned in and nobody had controls over those groups of people, nor were they long-term enough to understand the complications that go on. Now, there have been some studies on fats with people, but when people started doing talking back way back 60 years ago or so when Ansel Keys said fat was bad for us and people just jumped on that bandwagon and they're like oh no oh my god saturated fats are horrible we can't have them so one of the things that we find is that when we're dealing with studies on on saturated fats versus seed oils some of these people who are extremely healthy and not eating saturated fats but they're eating the seed oils there's so much other things that they're doing to help their health that it's really not applicable to most of us. And even at that, we're going to talk about how those seed oils are causing damage. But a two-week study of seeing what people eat and then measuring their health is not really a great study because those people have so many other things that they're doing to be healthy other than swapping saturated fats for seed oils. And that's really not what we want to do. We want to get rid of the seed oils use the saturated fats, and we're going to dive into that. So along the way, and welcome in, um, ask questions. I will answer them to the best of my ability. If I don't have the answer or I don't know today, I'm going to go find the answers, and I'll probably come back and talk about it tomorrow or do a video about it or whatever. But um, I'm not going to just give you an answer that I don't know or haven't heard from the professionals, the scientists who know. One other thing about Dr. Ben Bickman, who I talk about a lot, um, although I'm really proud of the fact that he had a hand in the products that I use for these reasons, um, 
what you need to understand about Ben is that he works in a lab and his whole love and science of science and what he does every day is exactly that he works on metabolism and all the factors around it every day. He actually has fat cells from various sources for various reasons in Petri dishes that they're studying fat cells that they've uh, ejected or removed from um, people who are injecting insulin fat cells from different people uh, around around the globe of metabolism and he studies those to see what's happening inside the fat cell and why all of this is going on so let's understand that so when i give dr ben bickman so much weight about the information that i get it's because he's actually studying it. He's not just some guy who thinks he knows what he's talking about and says, oh, Ben says this, but you know, that's not really correct. And there's studies that say, well, what studies are you talking about and what do they look like? So let's understand all of that. Whew, that was a lot. Okay, so the reason we're here is to talk about fats and how they in, uh, affect insulin resistance. And then I'm gonna talk about the ways that we start to overcome insulin resistance pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and all of these things that are related to them, we're going to go over all that. Now understand, before we dive into fats, that 93% of us are um, insulin resistant or have a metabolic disorder and metabolism links directly to insulin resistance or insulin. So let's go over what insulin is and why this is all important. And then we're going to dive into the fats, I promise. Now, insulin is a hormone in the body and its job, there are so many hormones in the body and we don't fully understand, most of us don't fully understand what those hormones are doing, right? So we, we, we hear them, but we don't know what they are. And insulin is just a hormone that just, insulin is a pretty major hormone, but we don't need it in high amounts. We want it in just the right amount to deal with the foods that we've eaten, not in amounts that are unnecessary in our body. Um, it transports the sugars to the cell. There are a number of other actions in the cell that happens with a, the insulin is like the key that unlocks the cell. And then there are other things that allow the sugars or the glucose into the cell. Now, every cell needs those sugars um, to thrive and survive because that sugar is actually energy in the cell. But what's happened in today's world is it's not calories. It's not calories. It's that energy of glucose that we're overwhelming our body with. So you'll hear more and more people talking about insulin resistance or low sugar diets or whatever. Um, and this is all pretty relevant to insulin resistance. We need to control the sugars that we're eating so that our body can do what it's meant to do. Insulin is a response to an overload of sugar in our system. When we look at the food we have available and what's happened in the U.S. is just spreading throughout the world. So most of our food is packaged, it's boxed, it's labeled, and it's high in these glucose, but it's also high in seed oils. That kind of food is driving metabolically insulin resistance up. And I can get into that a little bit later. I want to kind of get to the fat part, to the fat of the matter. Um, so... Too much insulin in the bloodstream starts to cause dysfunction in the body. Some cells are taking up too much. Some cells are not taking up enough. Some cells are still acting normally. But this whole dysfunction has been labeled insulin resistance. Now, we have to think about a couple of areas that are affected by it. One is the brain. The brain needs glucose. The brain also needs cholesterol coming from fats, right? So let's talk about how this happens and why the whole um, saturated fats versus unsaturated fats myth that we've been living in is gone so wrong and why so many people are not only having cognitive dysfunction, metabolic dysfunction, but intestinal dysfunction because of it. So the unsaturated fats, how many of you guys have been told that you've got to eat these seed oils, uh, soybean oil, grapeseed oil, uh, you know, canola oil, vegetable oil, those are a much healthier version for you than saturated fats. If you have been told that, put a one in the chat for me and let me know um, that if you have been told that unsaturated fats like those are healthier for you, put a two in the chat if you've been told that saturated fats are more healthy for you and going to cause 
you to feel better. So I'd like to know where everybody's at. And, um, and it's not like we're educated by what, what we know and what's been pushed out to us, never been told. So that's, that's a third option, right? Um, but we go into the grocery store and how many of you guys have seen all aisles and aisles and aisles of oils. And most of them are like canola oil, vegetable oil, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil, um, soybean oil, all of that. Those are, and they're marked as healthy, heart healthy oils, right? All of those are heart healthy is what they say. And what people will try to tell you, people like the food industry, who's trying to sell those oils to you, try to tell you is that these saturated fats are really bad for you. Okay. That the saturated fats are causing the problem. They're causing your cholesterol to go up. They're causing arterial plaques. They're causing all of this dysfunction in the body. Well, we want to set that to rest right now. So the saturated fats are generally things like fruit fats. Let's understand that there's not really fats in vegetables. So anything that says vegetable oil is really not going to be a healthy fat for you. A seed oil yeah, there are some seeds that there are some components in those oils that are good for you, but let's talk about how they're processed first. Then we're going to go into some other things. Um, so we want to focus on fruit fats, and I'll get to why those later. But fruit fats would be avocado, olive, and coconut oil. We'll talk about why in a minute. But the fats that are causing damage, the seed oils are generally processed by um, soaking them in a high amount of hexane, putting them through a high amount of pressure to extract whatever oil we can get out of them. And then they package that as a food product. Now, hexane is a highly toxic solvent. And people will say, yeah, but they, they rinse those or they clean those of the hexane. How much of the hexane can they get out of that oil before it comes to you? And they're not measuring that. They're not measuring and telling you how much of the hexane is left. Another point is that this gentleman called Rockefeller was, you know, he had all this, this food waste and he's always trying to find out ways to make more money out of what he already has without spending, you know, so that's a good business model, actually trying to trying to use up waste to make a new product. These oils were actually originally de de developed as a machine oil. That's why they have such a high flash point. They were developed to run through machines and be able to not break down in high heat environments. But they decided, hey, these are made from food. We can market it as a food substance. And if we tell people it's a healthier version than, than butter or animal fats, and so then in comes margarine, which has nothing to do with dairy, um, and then we tell them that the animal fats are bad, that the avocado and coconut fats are bad. We can sell more of this to them and package it as something really healthy. Now, why are they not healthy? Number one, those unsaturated fats, those, those seed oils are high in something called linoleic acids. Now I'm going to have to refer to my notes here. So um, when, when we get linoleic acid into the body, it converts into something called 4-HNE right? Okay. So what happens or 4-HE. So when, when the linoleic acid is converting into 4-HE, now what happens is that 4-HE, that influx of 4-HE in the system is doing something called um, lipogenesis. So it's forcing fat cells to get bigger. So those healthy fats are actually making your fat cells bigger. And that's not really why you're drinking, you're eating them, right? I'm thinking drinking. You're eating them because you want the reverse effect. But nobody's telling you that that linoleic acid, that high amount of linoleic acid that's found in these seed oils is causing your fat cells to grow. So when we have this phenomenon happening in the body, those fat cells start to get full and they start to get insulin resistant like other cells in the body. In this instance, normally I talk about sugar, but we're going to talk a little bit about fats today, even though it doesn't um, link into the protocol that I use. It links into insulin resistance, and it does in the fact that we want to know what to stay away from to reverse our insulin resistance. But in effect, instead of being skinnier and fitter by using those seed oils, you're encouraging your body to become 
um, fatter and more insulin resistant. So when the fat cells, maybe the rest of the body's not insulin resistant, but eating high amounts of, of those seed oils can cause insulin resistance in the fat cells. Once the fat cells start to become insulin resistant, a lot of other things start to happen in the body and the rest of the cells start to become insulin resistant as well as insulin levels go up because it can no longer deliver energy, glucose into the fat cells because of high use of seed oils. Ooh, that's a long story around, right? But how that's happening is those fat cells are expanding and, um, and that goes on. But beyond the fat cells expanding and becoming insulin resistant, they start to leak not just glucose, but free, uh, what is it? Free chain, free fatty acids. Those free fatty acids then start to become inflammatory. Now, inflammation also increases insulin and causes more insulin resistance. So two ways, just by the fat cell becoming insulin resistant itself and then releasing more inflammation, now the rest of the body, those fat cells actually become really inflammatory, especially when they're fed by these fats. Now we have the storm of we're gaining fat, we're getting more insulin resistant, we're getting more um, close to pre-diabetes, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all the things, right? All starting from high amounts of linoleic acids in these seed oils. A couple of other things to consider. Um, when we talk about oxidative stress and free radicals, which are highly damaging to the body, and so we're always looking for antioxidants, would you be, would you be shocked to know that these linoleic acids actually are starting to cause some of that oxidative stress or the, or the seed oils are causing some of that oxidative stress. So they're increasing free radicals, oxidative stress in your system. Now your system is starting to break down. Now you have cells that are becoming inflamed. And as we talked about in the last few days with thyroid and whatnot, now they're inflamed and they have this free radical buildup in them. They're, they're resistant to your thyroid hormone. So yes, it links into thyroid. All of this starts to happen, this chain reaction of um, disease and, and unhealth happening. Um, I, oh yeah, that's the other thing. And that high level of inflammation and that high level of those seed oils actually, good morning, Melba, starts to mess with your mitochondrial function. So is this important only for people who are heavy or is it important for people who are healthy? So that some of the actions are not going to be like the fat action. It's not going to be as devastating in people who are healthy and having a low calorie diet um, because there's not enough fuel for those those things to happen. But what is happening is um, I just it's altering your mitochondrial function. Those the linoleic acid and those those fats are changing how much and how efficiently the mitochondria, the little powerhouses in every cell can function. And when we look cellularly at decreased function because of mitochondria, now we start to have devastating effects throughout the body. And what we're talking about in this instance is it all starting with those seed oils. And I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for this. And I know there's going to be people who are angry. And you know what? I don't really care. I don't really care because I'm really here to help give um, some better answers and some real truth other than what the food industry is pushing on us. So now, um, how many of you guys have heard that eating fat makes you fat? Put a one in the chat. If eating fat makes you fat has been what you've been told. Stay away from fat. Keep low fat everything because that fat is going to make you fat. If you've been told that, or that's what uh, you know, you've been living by. Put a one in the in the chat for me and let me know. And welcome in everybody who's joining. We're talking about fats this morning, and how it's all linked to insulin resistance and this disease in your body. So, all right, um, fats do not make you fat. In fact, I showed yesterday, and I don't know if I still have that picture up. I probably don't. But a gentleman who swapped, got rid of these seed oils, started focusing on animal fats, on these fruit fats I talk about, and made that the bulk of his diet. And obviously he works out, 
but he's more lean. He's not, he says he hasn't worked out any differently than, and so this is observational, right? He hasn't worked out any differently really than he did before when he struggled with a dad bod and excess fat and man boobs and, and love handles and all of that. And he was working out at the gym, trying to get that all gone, but he switched to saturated fats, animal proteins, and he's now leaner than he's ever been. Right. Yeah. From childhood. And so Fats do not make you fat. Your sugars make you fat. And these seed oils, we're going to talk about how that's making you fat because that's the root of the problem. So we talked about the linoleic acid adding fuel to the, the, the fat cells growing. But um, when we're eating fat, when we're eating the right kind of fat, you guys, I have to remember the notes that I'm taking here. So when we're when we switch over to saturated fats, what's happening is instead of causing this inflammation in the body, and like coconut oil has so many great bacteria, antibacterial op, uh, opportunities, all of all of this other components to these fats that are going on, but the saturated fats are omega threes, and those unsaturated fats are omega sixes. Now, when there's high amounts of omega sixes in the body, it starts to have dysfunction and more of this oxidative stress and whatnot. So then we need omega-3s to counterbalance that. But those fats, those omega-3s are not making you fat. No, Melba, bacon fat is, is fine. What happens with bacon is, and I'm going to take a little side detour, when they start adding all the nitrates and the in the curing and they add all these excess chemicals and processing to the bacon, that's when it goes wrong. That's why I switched to no nitrate bacon or uncured bacon. And the same thing with any, any pork product that I use is um, no nitrate or uncured so that we're not getting some of those damaging things. But the, the fat in the bacon itself is not bad until they start adding all the nitrates and crap into it. Is that clear? Does that, does that answer that question? So, when we think about fats in the animal world, we always have, a. if you're eating um, a piece of meat, there's always going to be some fat with it. We want to understand that all of our cell membranes, not just the muscle cell membranes, but all of our cell membranes are made up in part of fat. And we need those saturated omega-3s to help with healthy cell membrane structure. So um, Beth, we're going to talk about how you should eat in just a little bit. But right now, all you need to understand is ditch the seed oils, use avocado, olive, coconut oil, butter, ghee, or the, uh, the fats attached to your, your um, meats. How many of you guys have been removing the yolk from the egg because you were told that that yolk is going to cause cholesterol problems and cause you to have heart disease? Have you guys been told that? How many of you, because I run into people all the time who are like, I, I found this really great thing. It's just egg white. So it's just the protein and none of the cholesterol. Well, guess what? The universe, God, the creator, whatever, put all of that together because it was necessary together. It was never meant for us to take the yolk out of the egg and just eat the white. That's not what it was intended for. That's not how we were supposed to eat. We need that fat paired with protein so that protein can metabolize and create building blocks correctly and, ex and not have um, all this breakdown in cell membrane because it has the fat that builds up those cell membranes. So Jazzy, what I eat today, and, and we'll talk about this a little bit later when we get past the fast or the, the fat part, but today's a fasting day. No, don't remove the yolk from your egg. Leave the yolk in your egg. Stop the egg white madness. Stop it, stop it, stop it. It's not helping you. That excess protein you're getting in is not being able to be metabolized. And so you're likely peeing, pooping it out because you don't have fats attached to it. So that excess protein isn't doing you any good, but it's causing your body more stress because now it's got to get rid of it. It doesn't have fat to help it metabolize. What I eat, um, today's a fasting day, tomorrow won't be. Yesterday, my grandson was over, so I didn't eat as perfectly as I'd like, but I had like eggs and no nitrate sausage for breakfast. Um, he wanted hot dogs, so 
I um, use no nitrate hot dogs, all of that, but we put some cheese in it and we had hot dogs for lunch. Um, and then for dinner, we did have um, a honey garlic chicken with some roasted vegetables. That's basically how I eat. Um, I don't, I don't avoid packaged foods as much as I should. And I'm admonishing myself for that right now, because the more I learn, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, those bags of chips, they're soaked in these oils that are causing you to be sick. So it's not just the carbohydrates in those chips and, and even like the poppables and all the stuff that they're marketing as healthy. It's how they're processed that's causing you to be sick. So when we have these processed foods that are drenched in not just removed of fiber and higher in carbohydrates, but they're drenched in these seed oils. And if you're buying anything packaged, it likely has a high amount of some kind of seed oil in it. And if you notice, like me, now that I'm getting healthier, I had some barbecue potato chips with my grandson. Whew. Um, I just started noticing like aches and pains swelling in my body because now my body's more sensitive to the toxins in those oils. And so I'm like, mm, this is probably something you shouldn't be eating. Honey can be a good substitute, um, but honey actually is very high in the glycemic scale. If you're going to use honey, I would suggest that you actually add fiber in before you use it because honey is still going to spike your insulin level really high. It's a really pure form of sugar that's going to hit your system in a way that you might not want. I love honey for all the nutritional benefits, but I'm also very aware that honey is completely unwrapped from fiber. That means it's going to go directly to my system. So I said I had honey garlic chicken last night, a little bit of honey, some sriracha, some garlic, um, some other herbs and spices and chicken and, and good healthy chicken breast. But mama Newman, you know, I had my fiber before I started eating. And then we had carrots, which are higher on the glycemic scale. And we had potatoes, which are higher on the glycemic scale. So yes, I'm getting some of the nutrients from that, but there's also higher glycemic. So that's where I lean on the protocol to give me that fiber first to help mediate those sugars, either from honey or from those vegetables that are higher in the glycemic scale, meaning they spike my blood sugar quicker, okay? So that's why I use, utilize the program, the protocol. So I'm not having to be a Puritan, I can have those healthier foods that are still spiking my, my blood glucose a little bit, but protect myself by having the fiber first. Now, back to fat. Um, so when we have this high level of of unsaturated fats. By the way, I got to get this out because it's in the back of my head rambling around saying, I want to be said. So I'm going to say it. Um, these fats, these omega-6 fats, they're so highly processed and so toxic and they stink really bad. Would you be shocked to know that they're adding fragrance, like a perfume to those oils so that when you open up that bottle, it's not so stinky that you just want to run and dump it out because that's how toxic it is. They stink like horribly rancid stink if they don't add these fragrances to the oils to make them more palatable to you. So now you have something that has a high inflammatory rate and now they're adding um, fragrance to that oil. I didn't know that. I on it like I didn't know that till I start listening to these metabolic scientists talk about it and break it down and 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 Ben, um, who I was listening to for this information, has linked all of these studies and I do have um, a video I'm going to do a short video I'll do on this, um, and I will try to link some of those studies so you can see. Uh, I trust Ben because he takes the studies very seriously and he doesn't just look at situational or observational studies for his information. So um, back to the fats now, and I am going to rely on my notes because I am not the smart person like Ben Bickman. I'm relating information to you guys. So you don't have to go listen to the hours and hours of stuff that I listen to. All right. So, um, so what he said are a couple of things. When we're eating these unsaturated fats, these seed oils, 
Uh, it increases monocytes. They're things that gobble up the lipids. But when those monocytes are increased because of this omega-3 fatty acid, it starts to create this oxidation in the cell. And it, the cell starts to become foamy because now the monocytes are trying to gobble up this lipid, but they're creating um, oxygen. And so it actually looks like little foam cells. The horrible thing is, the more of this oxidative stress and foam cell that we have going on, the more it's producing or, or calling on proteins that then are calling for more monocytes to deal with this onslaught of um, linoleic acids and seed oils. Sorry, I just got a catch in my throat. In our system, and it's creating more foam cells. Those foam cells start to build up. So at first it's maybe a couple. And you continue to eat these, these seed oils. And now that's starting to go rampant. Those foam cells are actually the basis of what's causing the arterial plaque. It has nothing to do with saturated fats because they don't create that reaction in your body. They actually help clean that up. They help, again, with the cell membrane structure. So saturated fats are healthier. And there's enough studies out there, long-term controlled studies that show that saturated fats are better for you. Every cell of the body has some fat in its cell structure. So when we look at how we're feeding the fat in the cell structure, that's what we're talking about. Are you giving it stuff that's, that's causing more inflammation, causing more oxidation, or are you giving it food that's helping the fat cell membrane build correctly? So the whole low fat, high carbohydrate diet is, and this is, I didn't explain any of that yet, but that's wrong. Like remember Susan Powder who was like, oh, you need to focus more on the carbohydrates and drop all the fats. And we fell into this, this um, high carbohydrate, low fat diet. And then um, that whole thing got proven wrong and she's no longer around or, you know, maybe hopefully she's changed her views on that. But the low fat diets are not healthy for you. If... <sighs> Higher fat diets. So if you're looking at caloric intake, you want to get your, your calories from proteins and fats. Okay. If you're getting in these saturated monounsaturated fats like olive oil or olives, avocado oil or avocados, coconut oil or coconut, coconut's higher in sugar, right? But it has a little bit, if you're eating the whole meat, it also has a lot of fiber. So it's a lot better. But if you're feeding your body those oils, you're not having the devastating oxidative effects in your body that you have with these unsaturated fats. So um, again, those unsaturated fats are causing the foam cells that are causing the plaque, not the saturated fats, the unsaturated fats. And in fact, how the body deals with those omega-6s in the unsaturated fats is we need more omega-3s. So when we look at fish oil, this is part of the reason they're so healthy for you. They're helping to balance out the fact that we have so much omega-6 or seed oils in our diet. When we look at how we ate fat over the last 50 years, soybean oil was very low or, or nothing. And now all of a sudden it's the highest used fat that we have. And yet people are getting sicker. We cut out all the good fats and we started eating these other fats. And now people are sicker than ever. Why? Well, there's a lot of studies about why. So, and we're going over just briefly some of those. Um, so the higher or the more unsaturated the fat is, the quicker it oxidizes in the cell. The more we lean towards monounsaturated and saturated, the slower and lower it becomes oxidized or inflammatory in the cell. So those monounsaturated, saturated fats are not causing the inflammation in your cell. That's important. That inflammation, again, in absence of everything else, still will cause a healthy person to slowly become insulin resistant, even insulin resistant, even in um, the absence of having excess sugars because of this oxidative stress, free radicals, and, and inflammation in the system. Remember, inflammation, we talked yesterday about there's three pathways to insulin resistance, stress, um, high cortisol and epinephrine levels. Inflammation causes insulin resistance and too much sugar causes insulin resistance. 
So right now we're talking about how this inflammatory response is causing insulin resistance by taking in too much of those oils. So, um, and look, if we're talking about, when we talk about it affects the mitochondrial function, um, why is that important? Well, if you want better levels of estrogen, testosterone, and use, be able to use your vitamin D, your cells have to be healthy and um, you have to have those healthier saturated fats for you to be able to use those. So those saturated fats are actually helping you produce act, uh, normal levels of estrogen, testosterone, and, and uh, utilize your vitamin D better. Mitochondrial function is where that comes from. So um, <laughs> we just went over a lot of those notes. Oh, so the interesting thing is there are studies from some major universities that talk about exactly what I'm talking about. So the top heart health hospital in the world, the University of Sydney, or they're the, the makers of the glycemic index. Cleveland Clinic is the top ho uh, hospital for heart health. But the University of Sydney did a study on this whole oil thing. And they said in their study that seed oils accelerated, accelerated the death rate, including death rate from heart disease, the more the person had these seed oils, the quicker they were dying. So the more the person was not using the seed oils and leaning into the saturated, monounsaturated fats that I talk about, had a longer, healthier life. That's from a respected clinic um, called the, the University of Sydney. But there's also a similar, there's other studies and one from the uh, Shanghai University that all came about the same information. This whole, this whole idea of the seed oils being healthy is being pushed on you by a food industry that's trying to sell you um, to use their waste product as food. So that's, um, that's the biggest part of all of that. Does that, does all that make sense? Um, I know I can't get into it as much as Ben Bickman does or some of the, you know, like the University of Cleveland or the University of Sydney um, or Shanghai Clinic, but I will try to get a video done and link some of those studies so you can look at them if you so choose. But understand that just at the bottom line, unsaturated fats, seed oils are causing you to be sicker, they're causing you to be fatter, and they're causing more inflammation, causing you to become more insulin resistant. How do you combat that? Use olives, olive oil, avocado, avocado oil, coconut, coconut oil, um, and then your whole fats from protein sources, animal protein sources, like the bacon in fat or the fat that comes with your steak. You guys know that when you have a steak, you cut off all the fat and it's a little bit more dry and it just doesn't taste as much as good. That's the other thing with this whole fat problem when they decided to start taking out the saturated monounsaturated fats that by the way keep you more satiated and keep you healthier they had to figure out a way to flavor the food because now grapeseed oil is not one i would would rely on for cooking or any of that either if it says seed oil it's probably not a healthier oil for you now there are components in some of those oils that people promote as healthy but I would just stick to avocado, coconut, and olive oil and the animal fats, okay? Um, animals are built different. Most of these like cows and whatnot, they're built different than us. And so they can process some of these things in a different way. And they actually are like the pre-processing for our bodies. So when we lean on those animals, it's, it's just how you know, it's just how we were, how we were built to be. Now I get that that's going to upset vegans, right? I get that. Yesterday I talked about how, um, vegetables and, and like protein from vegetables can be not as metabolically available and how, um, some of those proteins have components in them that are causing other problems. So really, I'm, I'm a car, I'm carnivoristic. I don't eat a carnivore, like only meat diet, but my diet is heavily meats and fats and it's, I'm healthier than I've been for a long time. Um, for me, what's happened is 
that I ate the other way for 50 something years of my life and my body got really sick from eating the other way. So now at 60 years old, not only am I combating and trying to adjust my, my diet and the way I eat and the way I think about food to starting to look into some of the cellular damage that's happened in my body, in particular in my liver and start to fix those because the liver being damaged highly relates not just to fructose and glucose, but these, these linoleic acid and seed oils, but it also regulates things like thyroid. And so now if the liver is not functioning properly, we have problems with how to utilize energy, how much sugar is in our bloodstream, all kinds of things. Okay. All right. Enough on fats. Now, so people were asking how I eat, what I do. All right. When I'm talking about insulin resistance, generally I talk about keeping your sugar levels in check. And that doesn't mean you have to give up all the foods you love, but it does mean start thinking about how many packaged and processed foods you eat. Start, start eating more whole foods. My kids started doing this too, because to be honest, we all had busy, busy lives and we were all eating out a lot because we were just like rushing from one thing to another. And my, my son and my daughter-in-law here that are close to me started using, I think they use every plate, but they eat more whole, um, home cooked foods and they've noticed their health getting better. And I've talked to all my kids and so they don't have those seed oils in their house. They use the same oils as I do. And now they notice when they go out to eat that they get sicker quicker when they're out eating foods that are drenched in carbohydrates and seed oils. So here are the six simple tips and then I'm going to show you the protocol I use. So again, it's fiber first. Interestingly enough, I was listening to the glucose goddess. Um, and one of the things she talks about is similar to what I talk about, only she says, eat your veggies first, then eat protein, then eat fats, and then eat those processed carbohydrates later. It will reduce your blood sugar spike by about 75% eating in that order. Now, the protocol I use uses a fiber, which is really what we're trying to get from those vegetables and a full com complement of vitamins and minerals that are designed to help aid metabolism. I drink this first, that if I'm not having a high vegetable meal, which I don't always, I have this first regardless, and that helps reduce my blood sugar spike by 20%. Now, when we add onto it the order of food in our plate, it's going to be able to reduce that blood glucose spike by up to 75%. So fiber first, and then protein, prioritize protein, then fill up with healthy fats, save those sugary starchy carbs so if you're doing white potatoes french fries any of that stuff with the meal have them last and it will help reduce that blood sugar spike and help get the insulin under control fiber first prioritize protein fill with fats limit your carbs and then the last two of my six are do some intermittent fasting our bodies were built for it I want to talk about intermittent fasting and OMAD. I want people to start understanding this. We're going to talk about that in a second. The last thing is move your body. We're far too sedentary. Um, I have been learning to game, to connect with my family around the world, which I've never done. It's crazy to me that at 60, I'm, I'm starting to um, play video games with my kids because it's a social time for us. But one of the things I've, um, I've implemented is that between games, you know, we have to do like 10 couch squats or we have to get up and dance while the next load is leading or we have to do something so that we're moving. Um, or like my little seven-year-old grandson, we have chores he has to do before we can game. And one of those chores is simply some simple at-home exercises like push-ups and, and different movements that we do at the home that get the body moving and stretching and being more healthy. So just move your body. Um, better yet, if you can do some weight bearing exercise and do that exercise till failure, it doesn't matter if you're lifting heavy weights or if you're lifting light weights, just do it till failure. Um, one of my kids is friends who's online that uh, I've been talking to and he's 50, not 60, but he used to be an athlete and his joints are hurting and, and I get that. So there's that complaint with a lot of people. So lighten up the weight. When he was talking about doing a leg workout and whatnot, he was saying he was only using five or 10 pounds, but he just did enough reps that it got him to failure. So less stress on the joints, but more health in the body. And thank you for all the loves, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. 
So those are the six simple steps. Again, fiber first, prioritize protein, fill up with fats, limit your carbs, um, do some intermittent fasting and move your body. Now I have an ebook. It's in my profile link that you can get that go re recaps all of that. So you have something to look at and go back. What was it she said? And what are we doing here? But that order is the order you want to eat your food in. Now, I was extremely insulin resistant to the point that I got to be pre-diabetic and diabetic. And how does that happen? How is it like for 55 years, I'm not diabetic. And all of a sudden in a couple of months, I'm diabetic and it's getting devastating because that's part of what's happening with our bodies. When we start to build insulin resistance, it doesn't show up in high blood sugars until that insulin resistance is so bad that it can no longer help deliver the glucose in the bloodstream because cells aren't taking it up. Fat cells are full, all of that. So all the while you've had cells that are resistant, cells that are overdoing it, cells that are just not working properly. But because your blood glucose wasn't high, because your A1C wasn't high, the doctor's missing it. Now all of a sudden it tips and it's been so bad for so long and caused havoc throughout your body to the point that your blood glucose is now high. And now the doctor goes, aha, you're pre-diabetic, you're diabetic, we got to get this under control. So there's a flaw in our medical system and how they test for some of this. They're working on it. There is a test called the HOMA, H-O-M-A, IR, insulin resistance test, but it still is imperfect. It's not really giving the best clue. There are some calculations on how you can tell um, if you're insulin resistant or you're insulin resistant or your risk for it. And they're in my how to tell tab here on TikTok. So go take a look at those and see what calculations you can do without going and adding extra tests to your score. And even if you do add that insulin resistant test, there's a calculation that you need to use with it and your blood glucose numbers to really understand that insulin level in your body. Okay. Um, so that now back to, I had, I had a comment just come through from something else and I'm like, oh man, what is this? Melba, you don't remove the yolks is packaged lunch meat that doesn't have nitrates. Okay. Melba, I, they're okay. So packaged lunch meat that doesn't have nitrates. Okay. Anytime it's highly processed, I'm going to say limit it. Do better by having the no nitrates uncured. Yes. But if it's packaged and processed, it still is probably damaging to your system. So limit those and you'll start to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. So like I do, my grandson's favorite, favorite thing in the world is ham and cheese sandwiches. He loves him some ham. So I'm just careful about the ham we buy and eat. And generally, you know, like we'll have some grass fed beef burgers or we'll have, I eat a lot of chicken breast. We'll have a lot of that stuff. But when he's wanting those, you know, which he does when he comes over, I fix him um, a ham and croissant sandwich or ham and cheese sandwich on a croissant. But I just try to make sure that the ingredients are as clean as I can get them. And that's the gold of this, you guys. You can go as deep into it as you want or as shallow as you need, um, but it doesn't have to be all that difficult and hard. It's just a few swaps. You can still have the foods you love. I just learned to cook with butter and, and um, olive oil and use coconut oil where applicable. I add coconut oil or coconut milk or whole cream or avocado to my um, protein shakes to make sure that I'm metabolizing that protein correctly. And I stay satiated for so long on a shake that would make me feel hungry a half hour later. I stay satiated by adding in the right fats and I'm helping my body get healthier. Um, all of my scores across the board from how my body functions to my memory function, to my energy levels, to my actual lab levels, to me being off of 13 medications has all been impacted by these small swaps. Now, on top of the small swaps, what I did, what really got me started on this journey, before I understood any of this, before I made any of these changes, this is all I did. A tea in the morning, you see me drink it every morning, um, and it tastes great. It actually adds energy. My granddaughter, who's six, actually, we have to fight her not to drink up her mama's tea um, because mama needs it, right? But she loves the tea and she will drink it too. She's taken one of these and gulped down the whole thing of mine 
because it does taste great. And it's, I don't mind when she does it because it's good for her. And I keep enough around that when I'm around her, it doesn't matter to me if she drinks up my tea. I'm glad she is because she's getting a high amount of nutrients. She's getting things like antioxidants, anti-cancer properties, anti-inflammatory properties. For me, because I can do it, I love to see her drink the tea. The tea shuts down my hunger, helps me feel better, helps with my mood, helps with the satiety, helps with me burning fat for fuel, um, and all those other properties. So I drink this tea every morning. I'm having it hot. But as I said, here's a cold one that I'll transition to when I'm done with this live um, as this gets drunk up. Second step of the protocol that I do is adding in fibers. Fiber first. Why these fibers? Why not Metamucil or Benefiber? I'm so glad that people have stopped coming in and saying, I just use Metamucil. Because look, this is seven different types of fiber, soluble and unsoluble. If you want to know what those are, let me know. I'll talk about that. But this is specific fibers that have been scientifically designed. And again, this guy, I'm tossing stuff around. This guy had a hand in developing both of those products. In fact, I'm going to take a pause. He says this is the best yerba mate tea on the planet. It's the one that he drinks. And this can increase your GLP-1 um, action in your body by 70%. That GLP-1 is helping you burn fat for fuel, helping you stay satiated. And at this point, it starts becoming comparable to the actions of those drugs that are causing damage, but without the drug effects. So that's the tea. This, the seven different soluble and insoluble fibers help you reduce a blood sugar spike by 20% before you eat. Drink it 10 minutes before. A couple other things that it's happening is it's creating this gel matrix. It gets really thick. And if you were to mix this and Metamucil in a glass of water, you would see the difference. The Metamucil kind of stays watery and grainy. This gets really, it will actually start to look like pudding after a time. And that's what we want. We want that thickness, that stickiness in this fiber because it helps encapsulate those sugars and those fats and slow down how quickly they hit the system. We have food passing through our system way too quickly. And when it goes through too quickly, we can't utilize all the nutrients. So not only is this helping me with a blood sugar spike, now it's holding on to food so that my body can start absorbing the nutrients in my food. And that's golden. There's so many benefits for, from this form for, for me from this uh, that I, I can't imagine a day where I wouldn't drink this. I've drunk this, especially in the beginning when I suffered with really bad um, acid reflux and gastritis. Instead of having Tums or those things that are causing more damage, I would just drink a glass of this whether I was eating or not. And it would soothe and calm down my stomach, coat it, and it helped me with all of those issues. And still today, if I go out and I eat out and I get a hold of the wrong things, and I know they've been cooked in seed oils because I get home, now I have some gastrointestinal distress, now I have some acid reflux, now I have some gastritis kicking off. And so what I do to combat that, even though I had it beforehand, is I'll have another one of these before bed to help soothe that savage stomach that's being triggered by all those seed oils. Okay, so a tea in the morning, a pre-meal drink before I eat anything, multiple actions for our metabolic health that's helping overcome things like insulin resistance, diabetes, all the things up above. There's a 90-day money-back guarantee for it. There's um, a quality guarantee and there's a low price guarantee when you use my link, which is in my profile link. Um, but it's a simple system. In the beginning, when I started doing this and I was able to lose 50 pounds and start to reverse my eyesight and grow hair back for a while, it's been three years now, but for a while I had, I had bangs that were like here because my hair was growing back in along my crown and along these sides. You'll see they're still thin. That's genetic. But I lost all this hair when I was severely insulin resistant. There's a reason why I learned to wear my hair forward because when I pulled it back, there was these balding spots. Ooh, ooh, you know something about me nobody else does now. But all of that stopped for me when I started addressing my insulin resistance. Too much to take in. Wendy, it's not that much. And here's the thing. When you guys use my link to get the protocol. 
So I talk about all the science stuff because I want, because some people just want to understand Wendy, but here's the thing. It doesn't have to be that hard. I didn't know any of this when I started. All I knew was this. I need to address my diabetes and I didn't know that it was leading to all these other health issues I had. So in the beginning for the first year or so, all I knew was drink a tea in the morning, drink a pre-meal drink before I eat anything and I'm done. I had McDonald's. I had uh, Burger King and Jack in the Box. In the beginning, I drove for Lyft and Uber at night during the midnight hour because it was the most profitable for me. Um, but it meant that there was for those eight or 10 hours, there was no food available for me outside of um, those two Jack in the Box or McDonald's because it was during the pandemic and the end of the pandemic and they were the only places open. So um, for me to get a meal, uh, unless I could get back home, which wasn't very likely when you do that kind of work, that's what I ate for one meal of the day. When I was home, I, my food, my fridge was full of um, whole foods and, and I tried to eat better then. But to be honest, during the first year of my, my transition into this lifestyle, I ate a lot, at least one meal out every day because that was what was available. So it doesn't have to be hard. <laughs> Chris, thank you. I love the science info too. And I know that for some people it's inundating. So I can one-on-one -on -one break it down and just help you understand more, you know, with you what's happening. It doesn't have to be that hard. I like to explain the science because so many people want to understand why this works, why what I'm doing is actually changing lives and why um, it actually works. If you're consistent with it and listen to the science behind it. You don't have to be sciencey to do this. You don't have to understand all that. All you really need to understand, Wendy, is that this is changing insulin resistance, diabetes, and all the, the stuff linked to it can get better as well when you get those insulin levels down. Now, um, would almond flour be okay for insulin resistance? Wheat flour is okay for insulin resistance in moderation. Almond flour is okay in moderation. Almond flour is maybe marginally better, but you're not getting some, I mean, it, it's tough to cook with almond flour because you don't have the binders that um, wheat flour has. And TikTok does this weird thing where it pulls the comments up and then I am not used to getting them down. So um, I guess we're just going to live with it this way. Uh, good morning, Tammy. I didn't see you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, all right. So you guys, we're about done with this little talk this morning. Just please understand with all the sciencey stuff, with all the information, that when I say seed oils are bad for you and these other saturated fats are better for you, there's reasons why. It's not just anecdotal. It's not just like, oh, somebody said those saturated fats are bad because there was a two-week study and it was incomplete and blah, blah, blah. No, we're leaning on science and what's really measurable to understand all of this. So Wendy, all you need to know is stay away from seed oils, lean into the oils I talked about, and you should start feeling better with just some of that, especially those of you with gastrointestinal issues. Okay. And also, Wendy, I have a lot of people who listen for months before they decide to do the, the program because um, it is a lot. It is a lot. Sometimes it's a lot for me too. And uh, that's fine. You get that it's your journey. You do it when it's right for you. Karen, what's in the tube? So these packets, the other thing that I didn't mention is with these packets, so tea in this one, yerba mate tea, highly concentrated, about 375 times the potency of some components in this as a regular bagged yerba mate tea, but we've taken it through a patented process in Switzerland called Hyperpure, which removes pesticides and toxins from it. Um, and then this is a multi-fiber blend with some plant sterols and some vitamins and minerals that are helping reduce blood glucose spikes, as well as helping build gut health. It's prebiotics in here. And so those prebiotics feed your probiotics, the healthy stuff in your gut. Um, I heard, I heard, uh, was it Dr. Mark Hyman? Yeah, it was Dr. Mark Hyman talking about it. And he was like, I don't, I'm not a proponent of adding probiotics into your system unless you're getting in good prebiotics with it. So the best thing is to get in prebiotics while you're giving your body 
more probiotics. Because if you're just dumping more probiotics into a system that they can't feed off of, you're wasting your money. So is, has anybody been doing probiotics? Because you've been told that's great. Put a number one in, but skip the prebiotic part of it. Look, if you want your probiotics to be strong, it's not just about adding more to it. It's about giving those something to thrive on. Sugar thrives or gives something to the negative microbiome to thrive on. And the fiber is positive for the probiotics. So if you're, if you're thinking that by taking probiotics, you're, you're addressing your gut issues, you might be just adding fuel to the fire because those probiotics can't live long if you're not feeding them. Okay. Um, and this fiber actually, when I, I did some studies on myself and then I talked to Dr. Bickman about it. So observational studies, right? Nothing controlled, just my own anecdotal stuff, but I did a 10 day fast and, um, I've done five days, I've done three days, I've done seven days, I've done 10 days, and I measure my blood sugars, and I measure my ketones, and I, I do different things in the fast to see what's going to happen to my body, because that's the kind of geek I am. But during one fast, I was like, I wonder what would happen to my system if I add the fiber in. Now, my blood glucose levels were still rising and falling like they should, and there's reasons for that. But I added this, and my ketone levels actually went up. So the fiber in the absence of food is still building those probiotics, building this chain reaction in my stomach that says, hey, we can burn fat for fuel. We want to increase fuel usage and um, create this, this help with the autophagy and the cellular turnover and all that going on. So oftentimes, like today is I'm doing a 36 and 12 fast. Um, I was imperfect. I had a week off because my son deployed and I spent a lot of time with him. Um, and that meant food, food and family, giving him some of the foods that he always loved and that has always said mama makes it best. So I really wanted him to feel loved and appreciated before he goes to that area that he's in. And uh, we had an imperfect week, but now I'm back on the 36, 12 fast. Now, today... I could do one of these if I want to. It's going to help my ketones bump up and it's going to help me with fat burning. The packets make it easy because like if you look at tea, when people are like, oh, I'm just going to buy yerba mate tea. Well, if this is 375 times more potent and has far less or close to nothing with those toxins, do you want to bag 300, steep 375 bags of tea to get what's in this cup. And at that, you're spending more. And at that, you're having to go through the hassle of steeping the tea and all that. This I carry around in my purse. This I can dump into a bottle of water, or if I'm carrying this bottle around this and drink it up, or most likely for me, I carry the stainless steel cups. I'm one of those girls. Um, and I just put cold water in this and stir it up and I'm done. I don't have to worry about steeping tea, letting it cool, drinking it. Same thing this morning. I heated up some water and dumped my tea in it easy. Same thing with the fiber. It's just one packet. This is one, one serving. So I just really tear the top off of the packet, mix it in a little bit of water, drink it. I'm not worrying about scoops and powders and carrying all that around. These fit in my purse. And I know that I'm getting real food benefits for my body that is just giving me help. So Karen, I'll drop a link in here for you guys on YouTube and Facebook. And then on TikTok, you're just going to go to my profile, tap on the picture above, and um, that will take you to my profile page. And when you get there, right under the red lights, you'll see the, the link that I'm putting over in Facebook and YouTube. So this also has the links to all of my social media. It has a link to my WhatsApp. If you just need more information and you just don't want to talk about it on a live, because I get it, I was that person too, just text me and I'll make I'll answer you, I promise. Um, but to order, you're just going to go there. That will take you directly to, let's take a look at it. That will take you directly to the company's website. And that's important. If you go to Amazon, eBay, Walmart, you're not getting any of the guarantees and you're not getting coaching. And look, I know there's some people talking about it. Some people have more knowledge than not. And I'm not going to bash or want to bash anyone. But I want you to understand if you want coaching 
and you want it from um, a, a point of view that understands some of this stuff, then I would love it if you would choose me as that coach. So um, swipe left to close, swipe left, left. There we go. Okay, so let's thank you for all the loves. Whoever is sending those, you guys, you have no idea how much that means to my little heart when you send me all these likes and loves. So look, at on TikTok or on the, vid, the link that I sent to you guys on TikTok, you're going to get to my profile page right under these red lights is that link. <sighs> when you click on that and the link I sent to, to Facebook, YouTube land, this is it. You click on this top one. It will take you directly to the company's website, but make sure my name is up there. If you're wanting me to call you, text you all of that, you got to make sure my name is up there. Then it's going to take you through the buying process. So I said a tea in the morning, a pre-meal drink before anything you eat. So that's exactly how it's packaged. 30 of the tea, 60 of the pre-meal drink. That's the whole protocol. That's everything. Now you can choose between flavors. I will tell you this in all honesty. Um, the lemon has been backordered. We have so many people who love this product who are starting to represent it to their families, to everyone else. We have run low on the lemon. I love the lemon ginger. If you don't mind the spice, I love the lemon ginger. I have some super greens under my finger now. Um, which I normally do in the morning because I have fiber and super greens every morning. Um, but then there's the black, which tastes more like coffee. For a limited time, we have this apple spice flavor of the tea. Um, I would suggest getting it while you can. Here's the thing. I've had a couple of people who couldn't do the system because um, they said in the, in the past and currently some of the other products still have a little bit of sucralose in them and sucralose is not that damaging, but the company listed and they wanted to switch to stevia. If you want the um, natural version of the, these products, which we're transitioning into, let me know. I'll help you get a hold of the natural version. You won't get it from that link right now. When you buy, you're either going to get um, the, the regular version or the natural version until we run out of the regular version of the lemon and the balance. And once that's done, we'll all be in natural. But if you want the natural and it's important to you now, get a hold of me. I'll help you get that product. That's it though. That's all you have to do. Select your product um, and order it. One thing I haven't talked about for a while is please do the subscription. And it's not like, it's not a subscription that you call them back in a month and say, Hey, I can't use this. And they'd be like, too bad. You're buying it for six months. No, the company sends you out an email five days before your subscription goes out. So you have time to make changes in the product or whatever you need to, but there's no um, cancellation fee for it. So, but it does give you $10 off or $5 off the product, but it also gives you free shipping. So the shipping could be $9.99 to $14.99, depending on where you're at. But that's an extra cost you don't need to bear. Just click the subscription button and it takes care of that. And then I, you know, some days, um, like the other day, I think I had three or four calls from people who were like, my subscription's about to come out and I want to change this. I want the apple spice or I, I want to change the flavor or I need to do something different. Then I help them get through that. And you can do all of that. It's not like um, you're stuck, but it's going to save you at least $15 a month. So do the subscription because you can cancel it at any time. Now, um, Zuby, amazing. And so I don't, I don't often know people's TikTok name to their, their personal name. I hope you've been getting my texts. If you haven't, let me know. Um, before I hop off this morning, I do want to mention since we're talking about the product that like I have a customer who started doing it and she was feeling so much better. She wanted her husband on it. She wanted her daughter on it. She wanted her son on it. She had her daughter hop on a call with me and um, we spent about an hour explaining all things to her daughter uh, and giving her the choice. And the daughter was doing like the, the injections, um, semaglutide or whatever for weight loss. And after we talked, the daughter decided to titrate off of those injections and start doing the system. But now mom introduced three people to the system. So mom gets a $10 credit on every person that she um, introduced and bought the system. So for her, she now gets a $30 credit on her order every month that the rest of her family is buying. You have that opportunity to everyone does. And then um, you can take it from that to turning it into a business like I did. 
and uh, change your life in that way too, because my life is completely changed by doing the protocol for my health and the system or the business for my wealth. And so there we are. All right, Zuby, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and you're not getting texts and emails from me. So will you, will you send me a WhatsApp with your name and I'll go through um, my account and make sure that you're in the, the text and email list um, because I send out texts about once a week, sometimes twice a week, depending on like when the apple spice came out, I sent a text out to everybody about that. When the natural came out, I sent a text to everybody about that. And if you're not getting those, I need to remedy that because I want you to be taken care of. So I just need your name and then I can find it and fix that and then start talking with you more personally. Okay. Kim, you're so welcome. Okay, guys, I'm going to head out. Um, I do have a, a short video, so not like a 15, 20 minute, but a short video just talking about uh, the negative effects of the seed oils and the positive effects of the monounsaturated, saturated oils, along with I'll be able to drop in some of those links to the studies, and I will um, do my best to get that out today. Uh, tomorrow, 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 I do have an appointment at 10 a.m., so I'm going to strive to be here early, but I think what I'm going to do is push this, this call until three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, just for this one day, because um, my morning's probably going to be really busy trying to get to this appointment and I don't want to be late. So let's see you guys at three o'clock tomorrow. I'll post a video um, in the morning reminding you that I'll be here at three tomorrow and we will talk about... I think I want to talk about how the body uses energy so we can understand this a little bit better. If you have something else you want me to talk about, let me know. Okay. Um, otherwise, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We're just going to say, we're just going to set the intention now tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be live giving you all this information. I hope it helped. If you have questions about what I talked about today, ask me. If you have questions about any of the other stuff, go on your on YouTube, go to those tabs. And look through, there's one on the tea, the benefits of the tea. There's some on how to tell if you're insulin resistant, all of that. The rest of the videos, guys, even this live are housed on YouTube um, and on Facebook. YouTube is probably the easier place to find them, but you can find all of this information later on YouTube. And with that, we'll see you guys later. Thank you, everybody who joined this morning, who's here to learn and get your health back because we all deserve to be healthy and happy and we all deserve to um, not be bamboozled by an industry that's just trying to sell us food that's making us sick. Oh, okay, Melba, that's easy to fix. So you guys, um, we can talk about it, but if, if anything ever happens, like in your own subscription and your credit card didn't process, what they automatically do is bump it to the next month, but that doesn't mean it has to, has to stay that way. Melba will talk. Um, give me a couple of hours because I have a, a few things I have to jump into. But then I can you can just go into your subscription and reset the date and make sure your credit card is updated and you will still get your order out. Um, you should have gotten a notice. You, and that's the other thing with the company. It won't just drop it. You should have gotten an email, which I think you did that your order didn't process and it's something like, oops, it looks like we need more information. So we just got to go in and put in the information and reset that date for your order to come out now. Okay. Um, and we'll take care of that today. I'll make a note to make sure I call you as soon as I'm done with these other calls. Does that make sense? And if you need to know how to do it, if you guys, it's really easy to log in. You just go to shop.unicity.com and I'll type that in over there. Use the email you signed up with and the password you set. Right next to your name, there'll be a little tab, a drop-down tab, and in it is your auto ship. If you click that open, it will take you to your auto ship. You can change your credit card information and your shipping date right there, but I'll walk you through that. Um, you know, see if I could spell it. There. Okay, Melba, and we'll talk in just a couple hours when I'm off of these other calls. 
thank you everybody we'll see you tomorrow afternoon we'll talk about energy in the body and what's really happening and why you're insulin resistant and what's going on with this food and why fats are better so we'll talk to you tomorrow and have a great day